right, so it's May 25th, the day before the Saturday that I'm going to get some help. And here's how much wood chips I have left. By eyeballing, I'd say one, two, three, between three and four cubic yards to move. It's been here for a month at least. Here's a look at the garden. It's the night before. I'd say about half the garden has had the fresh wood chips laid down in the walking paths. Over here, I got the uh, new area I claimed last year, but I've also been meaning to claim about an equal amount of area and right around there. And I've not got around to that. Ultimate goal for mo tomorrow is to do that as well. That's last on my list. If I can't get that done, that's okay. But I'd like to get that done as well. Add another 300 square feet of uh, growable space just to the left of that row of beds. Another thing I'd like to do, I've got these three different, uh, or four composting stations. And in each of them, there's some well composted horse manure. But it's, you can see the level, right? One, two, three, four. It's gone down considerably, right? Because you know, you pile the stuff in and then it just goes down, breaks down. So I think what I'd like to do is turn all of these into hugo culture beds. So I want to throw a whole bunch of rotten wood in the bottom and, and different materials like that. I want to take all the soil out, throw a bunch of sort of rubbish and matter in there and then throw some of the soil back on top. Maybe a good 12 inches of soil back. Uh, I want to do that in each of these. And of course in this bed i got to dig this up because I've got a bunch of potatoes sitting in there and a cooler that hopefully are still viable to use as seed potatoes. Uh, I had a video that I did that before. Anyway, a lot of work to do here, right? A lot of work to do. And just to give you another look at the area outside my garden enclosure, so you can see those uh, fence posts over there. There's a little door, fence post, fence post. So this is the area outside the fence where I plant things that I have found rabbits and deer and stuff don't eat. So I've got one, two, three, four, five garden beds. Um, each of these beds is about 32 square feet. So one, two, three, four, five, 150 square feet. So this mess here, uh, this area from about here to, you know, parallel with that bed down there, I would like to turn that into gardening space too. I don't know how much work I'm going to get done tomorrow, but uh, this is something I've been meaning to do all spring and I have not to get around to it. I want to take all of this land and either put terraced gardens in or I want to do something here. And uh, it's a fairly large uh, project because I need wood. Uh, there's a lot of dead trees in the forest out there that I can use. Uh, but I have to gather them up and figure all that out. And uh, I don't know if there'll be enough time to do all that tomorrow but uh, that's another major goal for tomorrow if I can get that done and of course I got all the stuff I got to plant too but that's the easy part it's this hard lugging of heavy materials that uh, really wears you down uh, as as age creeps up on you <laughs> so uh, that's it for today we'll see what uh, gets done tomorrow it's also supposed to rain so hopefully the rain doesn't kibosh the whole thing Stay tuned. Here we have the wood chips totally gone. All gone. Dealt with. Got to clean up my herb garden. This is the side of my house. I just planted herbs right in the driveway. Put sand over top to keep the weeds down. This gets weeded once a year and it stays like this the whole year. Uh, that bucket there and that is uh, basil. The bucket's got basil underneath it and this here has basil underneath it. This still gets quite cool at night. Um, so, uh, and I, I had experiences planting basil. It never seems to do well being planted uh, in late May. So uh, I still planted in late May, late May, but I put this plastic over it hoping that it'll somehow uh, help. So it's a day later and garden is completely 
mulched, all the walkways are mulched. All that stuff from the driveway has been distributed through here. Not only that, but there's an area down there where I wanted to add some new gardening space when we got started on that yesterday. Young fella uh, hired did that in 15 minutes. <laughs> Just pickaxe that. Oh, that's an area about three feet by 12 feet. Just just raw weeds and stuff like that. So I'm gonna have, uh, going down that way, I'm gonna have a set of terraced gardens. Anyway, he took, he took a big chunk out of it. Here's another thing we did yesterday. I use these uh, sort of bins for composting. And uh, the soil level had really dropped in both of these because I uh, used the, this is all just manure and seaweed and hay and stuff like that. It had dropped considerably. So um, what we did was he took all the soil out and put it in, in buckets like these, right? Man, it's windy this morning. And, uh, and then I found a whole bunch of rotten wood. I probably put in the bottom of this bin here at least a foot high of rotten wood just from the, you know, from the woods back here, right? Tons of rotten wood on dead trees and stuff like that. So I put about a, I added about a foot of rotten wood down here and then some, uh, and a bunch of, uh, some leaves and the bags. <laughs> I got a bunch of leaf bags from leaves over there, so I threw the bags and leaves there. Then I threw some uh, weeds that I pulled when we redid all these uh, walkways, right? All these nice little walkways here and the walkways in my garden. Uh, you know, we probably filled a bucket like that full of weeds. So that's the only weeding I'll do this year. Um, anyway, I threw all those weeds in the bottom of this. I stomped on it a bit and then uh, threw a bunch of, uh, then we put all the soil back. So. The soil now, the soil levels to here, it was probably 10 or 12 inches lower than that when we started, right? So, and I'm going to plant uh, pumpkins here like I normally do, because right, the soil's so rich, right? It's just all this slowly breaking down manure and stuff, and still, I mean, this, this, this has been here for a year or two, and there's still, you can see a good amount of hay and stuff in it. And this was the stuff that was underneath. This was the stuff on the very bottom. Still not completely broken down. But there's very, you can still see the odd puck even. This, that's a manure puck, right? But it's been there for a while. Um, so it does take a while for that stuff to break down. A lot of leaf mold in there and, and stuff like that. Anyway, the pumpkins will love this and I imagine it'll grow like crazy. I'll put some seeds down and put a good mulch down and, and uh, yeah, this will just take off. But even after doing all of that, I got I put aside a bucket full of really nice stuff that I can use, um, you know, elsewhere in my garden, right? Just for different different purposes. So we did two of those. This is the other one, same same thing. Uh, this one still has to be dug up. I got a cooler full of potatoes that it, they got to go in the ground really soon. Uh, so I held off. We ran out of time anyway. I mean, we worked from eight o'clock to four o'clock. And that's probably got done. We spread the mulch all around here. I don't know, maybe four cubic yards of mulch spread all throughout the garden. I'll, I'll walk you through and show you that. And did these two beds and did a bunch of weeding around the property and uh, did a bit of work out back. All right, so just just uh, this is the entrance to my garden. Just a quick little walk through. It's all just to show you all the work that got done yesterday. We. Put all this nice uh, mulch down. I uh, also planted some tarragon along this edge here. See, this, this edge of my garden has all these different perennial herbs growing, right? oregano and thyme and savory and stuff like that. And there was a spare hole here, so I stuck some tarragon there. We'll see how that comes in. Anyway, moving on, and sorry for this insane wind, but yeah, we can look at this beautiful walking path now all throughout the garden. Right. Still got a lot of planting to do. There's nothing planted in this bed, nothing planted in that bed. Uh, there's some peas down the middle here, but I got to plant potatoes in either side of the peas. Um, that garden's warming up. I'm going to put beans there, I think. Uh, this garden here has uh, potatoes in it. I planted those a week or so ago. Underneath that mulch, they're still, they'll poke up eventually, I hope. 
Now well, continuing on, I guess this is a semi showing all the work that got done in terms of the mulching, but also a brief uh, garden tour as well. Uh, state of perennials, the blueberry bushes are starting to leaf out a little bit, just starting, even some uh, buds here. This guy look, look good. The uh, lovage is magnificent, three feet high, easily three feet high. Uh, this garden here where I planted asparagus I don't I don't know that the asparagus is growing yet the asparagus seeds but uh, I planted a line of um, peas down the middle and that's definitely come up so I have to get a trellis on there soon I I've promised many people a trellising video so I will do that soon I promise uh, what else asparagus is this height now, the ones that have started first. I'm really not harvesting them this year because uh, they got attacked mercilessly by slugs. So I've laid some slug bait down and stuff like that, but I just don't feel like I have enough growing here to start taking anything. I just have to feel like I have to leave them alone. So once they all look like this, for that height, I'm gonna deal with all these weeds down here. Maybe I'll do a video on that. I talked about that in a previous video. Maybe I'll show how I do that. So anyway, that's, that's what's going on with that. Triple crown blackberry bush that uh, got uh, attacked by uh, bunny rabbits last winter. Starting to show some signs of life, right? We got some budding out here. And uh, I planted another one right here. I think this is one of them, I believe. This one was provided by my sponsor, Vessi Seeds. And you can check the description box below for uh, the coupon code for uh, free shipping. Anyway, I planted this one here. That's from Vessi Seeds. Yeah, it's starting to come up. I planted that a week ago. It's just a bare root blackberry bush. Yeah, it seems to be doing okay. As soon as I got that stuff delivered, I did that video where I pulled everything out of the box. I think that night or the very next night, I planted everything. I got right on it. I recommend you do the same. And all these things that are coming up. Looks like a wee, but this is um, sun jokes or Jerusalem artichokes. I guess my tallest one is maybe six inches. I mean, this mulch is six, uh, three. <laughs> this mulch is, oh, three inches at least. So. If this is six inches above the mulch, it's nine inches high, right? Anyway, all the sun chokes are coming up. I seem to have them everywhere. It's completely weedy on the other side. So I figured by planting sun chokes along the border, because they're extremely invasive, they should keep the weeds from coming in. And yeah, the sun chokes will go this way, but I'll harvest them and eat them. <laughs> uh, they give you a bit of gas, but they're delicious. It's another good sized uh, asparagus. I'm amazed, like so many of these asparagus got damaged really bad by slugs. Just just a few of the stalks actually made it. So, uh, no asparagus for Greg. But uh, anyway, the slugs are happy. Well, actually the slugs are dead because I put out that um, slug bait and killed them all. <laughs> so they're not happy. It didn't work out well for them in the end. Anyways, uh, raspberries are bushing out really well. Um, prune them back. This one actually should have been pruned back a little further. You really want to prune it back to where you can just tell by looking at them they're going to be productive. Up up here is just not that productive, right? There, there's a bit of budding out, but you can tell the plant doesn't want to send anything there, so why why force it? I'll come along with my clippers and take a bypass clippers and take the, take that end off there. There's no point in having it there if it's not doing anything. Here's some, uh, down here, some lettuce that I moved from my cold frames. These were sown early March. And they're, uh, they got, you can see the leaf damage, right? So, so when I put them in here, they were immaculate looking. And then they got attacked pretty good immediately because they're in a weakened state. So then I came out and hit them with a shot of that Savers End All stuff. It's a pyrethrin based, uh, uh, I don't, I don't think you can call it an organic pesticide, but it's a pesticide that uh, if you want to have an organic gardening and if you've got a serious pest problem, I would use it. 
because it's it's just based on a, a extract from chrysanthemums, so it's it, it's uh, relatively benign in terms of your environment. It, it breaks down in about 24 hours, and uh, you know it's really not gonna. It, it's just gonna harm, harm. You know, it's gonna change the flavor of this leaf to what's attacking it, and it'll either kill what's attacking it or just send it away. But I find it really does put an end to uh, like this. This is clearly. Um, leaf beetle damage right and it really puts an end to it you, you just give it a light spray with that like that and and one of those a week really seems to do the job it's got a lemony smell and it really does seem to uh, deal with that so I'll come out here uh, some evening or morning and pick all these damaged leaves off right because they really have no future and they're just drawing energy from the plant that they could be investing in the nice the good leaves right so you carefully just sort of nip nip those off and uh, get rid of them, or eat them, or put them in a soup, or whatever. You can. They're still edible, um, but yeah, there's no point in leaving those on there, right? Because they're they've got no future, and the plant will just grow a lot faster. You think about it. You're just you're changing the ratio of root to green, so it'll start. These will start growing at a faster rate because you've taken away this this these things, right? Anyway, that's my theory. It seems to work for me. This bed's looking great. I got spinach alternating with uh, kale. So the initial kale I sowed here got decimated by flea beetle, and I hadn't treated it with anything. But I got so much of these uh, nice variety of kale growing in my cold frames that I sowed in March. There's enough to, this box here, there's, <laughs> there's enough to fill about three of these boxes. I don't know what I'm going to do with it all. Anyway, so seemed to be pretty good. All I did to move these is I picked a day before it was going to rain, and I came up and plopped them in the ground, and then the next day, I gave each one a light shot of the um, end all because I find that when you first move a, a transplant, particularly kale, for some reason the pests in my garden love kale. You think about it, the spinach in this garden is completely untouched. Nothing has even bothered it. No slugs, no flea beetle, nothing's bothered it. Um, but the initial kale that I had growing here was decimated by flea beetles. And I plopped this in, and I just gave everything one shot. That was probably just under a week ago. And they're doing fine. They're doing fine. I pick off the lower leaves that don't look good. Right, something like this where it's a bit uh, yellowed. It's got no, it's not going to come back. Plant's sacrificing that. So just take it off. But I find when you give them a shot of something like that, it really does seem to help. Now this one looks like it's been broken. Cutworm. Yeah, I think a cutworm's getting at this one. Anyway, I'm, I'm prattling on here. Spinach looks good. Uh, this garden was sown in early uh, in March as well, and I got a lot of dill coming in here. Uh, but uh, also, the, some of the kale's looking pretty good. And I've been moving it around. And a lot of the kale, it seemed like the, the only kale, that, you, can, you see the pattern, everything seems to be thicker in the middle. So I had a, one of those domes on, on this garden here. And it seems like the only place where things really grew were in the middle, where it was probably the warmest, right? And all the kale seemed to be, the kale that actually germinated and grew was bunched up in the middle. So I'm gradually, you know, whenever I've got a nice rainy day, I'm spreading it out. This garden will be full of kale. <laughs> also, I've got a lot more kale in my, my cold frame, the same variety that I've put in here. Um, so I got, I'm going to have two nice beds full of greens. Full of kale greens. I like to have two beds of greens. That seems to, two beds of kale for a family of four, where everybody eats kale. Seems to have these varieties anyway, especially this kind here, this wild, wild variety. Uh, seems to keep us in the kale business right up until December. And not only that, but I can normally freeze uh, 10, 10 pounds of kale in my freezer as well. Uh, I've done videos showing uh, how I do that. Uh, all of these kale were being attacked by uh, flea beetles as well. Um, but you can see they're looking really good now, right? You can see on this one there's some light. I don't know if that comes across. See those little dimples there near my thumb, right in front of my thumb. There's some light flea beetle damage. I just gave it a shot of that end all and done. And once the plants get to a certain size, and they're, they're getting close. Let me show you over here. So a plant, once a kale plant gets this size, and it's this strong and healthy, you don't need to treat it with anything. It's tough. Um, that is until the uh, cabbage moths show up. <laughs> 
once they show up. And if you're lucky, you've got some bird or other predator taking them out, but I don't seem to have that going on here. So uh, it doesn't matter how big a large plant is when uh, uh, cabbage moths show up, they'll take, they'll take anything out. Uh, but for now, that's not for a while, right? That's, I got another month, or I don't know what it is, month. I'm getting another month, give or take, before those, those uh, SOBs show up. So, uh, so really, this one doesn't need to be treated with anything. It, it should be, you can see, it's, I haven't really treated it, and it doesn't seem to have much damage. It seems like once they get to a certain size, like let's say once the base becomes an inch in diameter, they become invincible. At least this variety does, this uh, wild... Uh, Red Russian type kale, Siberian kale, seems to be invincible once it's of size. You know, I'd say it's maybe nine inches high, if I stretch the leaf like that. Once the base is about an inch wide, it's a pretty tough plant. And they grow right up until Christmas. There's some younger ones that I moved from my cold frame of the same variety as that. Right, these are my, I think these are my own kale. You can see when I first moved them, When I took them out of my cold frame, they were immaculate. And then they got this damage, right? See the damage there? So I just gave them a shot of that uh, end all. <laughs> really, I'm not, I'm not trying to make this uh, video a, uh, an ad for end all. I mean, they're, uh, they're my sponsor, but that's really not my goal. I'm just saying, if you have that problem, this is one way to solve it, right? You, you can't go out and pick flea beetles off your plants <laughs> right it's just not uh, you could put claws over it, whatever but I mean this that's you know you come out here and in, 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 in less than a minute this whole garden everything's just gotten a shot almost like you're putting bug dope on and then that's it this garden's all onions right you see they're all starting to poke up I grew potatoes and uh, lettuce here last year potatoes and then uh, I planted lettuce around August and got a nice fall crop of lettuce. It was mulched with leaves all winter long. The spinach is looking beautiful. We had a beautiful salad from that last night. I'm really enjoying that. Um, I got two varieties of spinach, right? I, don't, I can't remember which one's called Avon. I can't remember what the other one's called, but um, it looks like what they call Bloomdale. And I don't believe it's Bloomdale. It's got those big fat crinkled leaves. I really like this variety. It's very tasty, very green, very spinachy. Right, you can tell the other variety that we have over here. It's got more of a spade. This is Avon, I believe. It's got a spade shaped leaf. Much more. Uh, kind of looks like the stuff you get in the grocery store when you buy those plastic boxes of spinach. <laughs> it kind of looks like that, right? Um, but flavor wise, I don't. It tastes fine. Yeah, it's good. Anyway, I like the big crinkly stuff more because it looks big and crinkly. I guess we'll have to see what these look like once they get large. Maybe they look spectacular too. We'll see. These also have to be spaced out. These are very tight. All right? So whenever I come out to harvest spinach now, I, I pluck. You know, maybe a, a, every four inches or so, I'll pluck a couple plants out. It's hard to kill plants, but they're too tight, right? They're not going to grow well in, in tight like that. You just got to suck it up and do it. <laughs> suck it up, princess, and thin your plants. So uh, you just judiciously pick ones that you think should stay, the ones that look the best, and you pick the other ones and eat them. Here's some spinach that was moved about a week ago. And it had a, a tough go of it at first, but it seems like it's poked right up, right? Looking good. Bit of, see when I first moved it, and you can see how moved spinach it gets attacked right away. Can't stand being moved. But it, just you can just tell by the look of it, it looks happier now. So they're going to be fine. And today, this box here and this one here, even though it's cold, it's now I've got two shirts on right now, and my ears are cold, and uh, my nose is running to tell you the truth. It's that cold. Um, I don't know what it is. Maybe. Uh, 10 degrees Celsius. I mean, that's not that cold, but um, it's not squash planting weather. <laughs> Let's put it that way. But underneath these babies, it is. I'll have to make a video of that. Um, that's another trick. Like, I, I find my general rule of thumb for planting squash is when the petal, the leaf, uh, the, the flower petals start falling off your, tu your tulips in your yard. Um, 
when the flowers start to look, you know, just that awful sort of dying look that happens to the tulip flowers, generally speaking, that's when it's safe to put beans and squash in the ground because they like warm soil. But you can break all those rules by doing this. And they'll germinate faster and grow faster and, and really gives them a, a serious head start. So that's, what I, that's why these are here. Uh, nice bed of greens here. Uh, this was started in March as well. And uh, you know, I've done some thinning and replacing. Uh, the dome, you can see my domes aren't long enough to do the whole garden. They're, the domes are 8 feet long and the gardens are 10 feet long. So I've sown something here. I don't remember what I've sown here. Hey, we've got some Swiss chard. It doesn't look that great right now, but it'll, it'll trust me, it'll look better in a few weeks. It's just been moved around and reorganized a bit, so uh, the plants don't like that. The lettuce is looking good over there. That's like a romaine type lettuce. I can't remember the exact variety. Uh, on all these plants, were, you know, with the exception of a bit of the kale, which is my own seed, these were all provided by my sponsor, Vesti Seeds, to me. Um, I'm really impressed with the uh, vitality of the seeds and their germination rate. Um, and in this particular, I think it's called forest green or something like that, the lettuce. It's a really nice looking lettuce and hasn't been attacked by anything. It's just doing really well. So I'm really happy with that. Three, two, one. Under here I've got beets. So I planted some beets early in the season and they under under a dome and they come in really good. And then I took the dome off and they just started looking like hell really fast. And honestly, a lot of bee packages will say uh, plant as early as possible. But I don't think beets like the cold. Um, there's some holes I just duct taped. <laughs> Nothing fancy here. Um, I don't think they like the cold. Um, I really do think they, they're sensitive. I, I wouldn't sow beets. Canada, I wouldn't sell them till till May. But anyway, you know, so you can tell the the larger ones. I'm gonna hold this open with my head, right? Those are the one of the ones I sowed in May, nice and big, right? And then a lot of them suffered when I took took them, you know, when I took the lid off. So I put the lid back on the last couple weeks. So this is one I just sowed a couple weeks ago, and they're coming in really fast. The ones I re-sowed, right? This, like this this whole row right here, in the center of the frame there just sowed a couple weeks ago coming in really fast have to be thinned a bit and I uh, gotta get some more mulch on here eventually I'll wait till they're all higher anyway as long as I can leave this lid on I'm gonna leave it on because they seem to prefer um, the heat really seem to prefer, prefer the heat and I love my beets so I want them to be happy <laughs> beets are underrated and very good for you Over here, now we got some weeds and things happen here, but this is where I held the competition between Vessi seeds, parsnips, and my parsnips. And uh, you got some weeds and I got a bit of weeding to do, but because I got this paper here, it's a pretty small scale weeding. I could weed this garden out in 15 minutes easily. Um, and then I'll mulch. And once, I'm not gonna bother doing that. I'm gonna wait till these are good and high. I'll do a bit of weeding and I'll cover everything with mulch. You won't see any of this paper and it'll all just disappear. Um, but anyway, the Vessi seeds... Um, that guy's gonna go. Uh, the Vessi seeds... Uh, parsnips, I have to say, have outperformed, at least in terms of the ones sown in March, have easily outperformed <coughs> my own saved seeds. Um, they're doing really well and uh, Here's a row with my own seeds. You see there's one. <laughs> That's the germination rate for my saved ones. So they didn't come in so good. So I, I replanted here um, uh, a few nights ago. And that'll look, I'll come in and they'll catch up. I replanted using the Vessi seed uh, Albion variety. Yeah, I think in any given row I might have got one or two. There's one of mine right there, right? Look, at, I mean, this one looks as good as the Vessi Seeds one. It's just the germination rate. If you're gonna save your own parsnip seeds, you gotta plant them heavy. You gotta plant them way heavier than... So for the Vessi Seed one, I planted like one every two inches and almost all of them germinated. I did the same with mine. I planted one every two inches and like maybe one in every 20 germinated. 
Normally when I plant my own save, save, save seeds, I throw them down like you throw a lettuce. I throw a lot down. And uh, so I think that's that's the difference. Right, there's another one of my own seeds. But the rest didn't even come in. There's one, over the, one at the end over there too. The rest didn't even come in, so I had to replant. Just so you can see by comparison over here. So these are my own saved seeds, uh, parsnip. And look how big they are, right? I sowed these last November. I can't remember if it was November or October. I sowed them in, in, in November. I'm going to say November because that's when I think it was. And all I did is just lay them on the, I laid them on the soil and put seaweed on top. And that's it. <laughs> and look how great they are. I mean, these are, and these are going to be magnificent. I guarantee, well, all but, I wouldn't bet my house on it, but I am very confident these are going to be my best uh, parsnips. Because all the ones that seem to come in this way by accident, uh, seem to be bigger and better than the ones I planned on purpose. So I can't wait to see how this works out because what an easy way to plant stuff, right? Plant it in November. Uh, not everything will work that way, but uh, certainly parsnips seem to. Then they all came in in this garden. I've got a lot of weeds here, but that's not a problem. Uh, these things will get so big, they'll crowd everything up eventually. And I'll pull some of the weeds as well as I, as I go along. Hey, uh... A rather abrupt ending to uh, a very uh, shaky low budget video but uh, anyway I uh, lost a bunch of extra footage where I did a sort of wrap-up conversation in front of the camera I don't know what happened I don't know what went wrong anyway I hope that uh, gave you some good ideas that's uh, the advantage of hiring a strong young back to give you a hand with your garden for a few hours uh, get a lot done and I'm really happy with where everything is so hope that gave you some good ideas hope you enjoyed that and if you did please like share subscribe and until next time get out there get at it and have fun in your garden thanks for watching